Eddie Murphy is back as Axel Foley, the role that made him a superstar worldwide back in 1984, and he hasn't played the part of Axel since 1994 in the lacklustre third film. During the last three decades, there had been talk of a fourth movie, but it never seemed to get off the ground. They couldn't settle on a script, and a number of directors were attached, such as Brett Ratner, and a failed TV pilot was produced back in 2013. It seemed a fourth entry in the movie series was stuck in development hell. But now Jerry Brockheimer is back in control of the production, having produced Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2, so we finally have the fourth film in the long-running franchise. With Australian director Mark Malloy behind the camera, making this his first feature film debut, having spent his career directing commercials, and with Paramount Pictures no longer distributing and financing the film, Netflix secured the rights and it's only coming to streaming with no theatrical release intended. With an estimated budget of $150 million, the core cast of the original films is back. Of course, Eddie Murphy has returned to play Axel, along with Judge Reinhold as Billy Rosewood, who now works as a private investigator, John Aston as John Taggart, who is now the Chief of Police, Bronson Pinchot as Serge, Paul Reiser as Jeffrey, and new cast members Kevin Bacon as Captain Cade Grant, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Detective Bobby Abbott, and Taylor Page as Jane Saunders, Axel's estranged daughter, who now works in Beverly Hills as a criminal defence attorney. The reviews of Axel F have so far been a bit mixed, with the Guardian newspaper awarding it two stars, saying little energy to enliven their formulaic reunion. The Independent also gave it two stars, writing the film has the confidence to poke fun at the franchise's infamously bad third entry, yet comes to the table with nothing to prove, nothing to say, and nothing for Murphy to work with. The LA Times commented, from as early as the opening credits, you realise that everyone involved understood the assignment. The solution to creating a new Beverly Hills Cop movie was to simply make the first one all over again. What surprised me was that Robbie Collin of The Telegraph awarded it four stars, saying Murphy's comeback is stuck in the 80s, and that's fine. First time director Mark Malloy and his team uncannily recreate the original film's rhythm, texture and spirit. Murphy is on a bright, lively form and seems to be enjoying the experience. So for the film's story, it opens in Detroit, with Axel busting a gang of thieves at an ice hockey game and chases after them in a snowplow, tearing up the city, angering his boss, Jeffrey. Axel gets a call from Billy, who says his daughter is in trouble after taking on a case to defend a guy who's been accused of drug trafficking, and she's threatened by masked men to drop the case. Axel heads to Beverly Hills and catches up with Taggart and meets Detective Bobby Abbott, who knows of Axel's past activities in the city. Axel finds Billy is missing and his daughter Jane is not happy to see him, but they have to work together and put their past issues aside to find Billy and uncover the link between Billy's investigation and her daughter's case that has connections to the police. I loved the Beverly Hills Cop movies as a kid. They were always on TV. My most vivid memory is seeing number two the most as it was repeated a lot during my youth. I remember Beverly Hills Cop 3 coming out and the excitement to see that, but it fell completely flat, with only a couple of jokes that made me laugh. He ran up those stairs! And with the setting of a theme park, it softened the movie, giving it a more of a family-friendly appeal. It's interesting that director John Landis said, the script wasn't any good, but I figured, so what, I'll make it funny with Eddie. But then I discovered on the first day when I started giving Eddie some shtick, he said, you know, John, Axel Foley is an adult now. He's not a wise ass anymore. So with Beverly Hills Cop 3, I had this strange experience where he was very professional, but he just wasn't funny. I tried to put him in funny situations and he would find a way to step around them. Number 3 was critically panned and some people may be unaware or have forgotten that Beverly Hills Cop 2 didn't do well with critics, with its script being criticised heavily and the complaints of the lack of comedy compared to the first film. Siskel and Ebert put Beverly Hills Cop 2 on their list of the worst movies of 1987, but audiences didn't care and it raked in nearly $300 million worldwide. So where does Axel F stand up compared to the other sequels? It's certainly better than part three, that's for sure. It's not as slick looking as part two, as that had Tony Scott directing, and he had a fantastic eye to capture amazing visuals like his brother Ridley. But the fourth film has a better story than part two, but it's not without its problems, which mainly consists of a lull in the middle act, with too much focus on Axel and his daughter trying to patch things up, and the villains aren't really fleshed out enough, and any sort of surprise on who the main bad guy is, is revealed too early on. 
so it basically has Axel catching up with what the audience already know, but this is a common trait of the series, it's following the formula. Aside from those minor issues I have with it, the story has far more going on with it to bring new life into the series. The film doesn't feel like it's weighed down by nostalgia. It opens with two songs from Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2, which made me smile, but it did feel like a last minute inclusion to play on people's fond memories of the series. But once it gets into the swing of things, it just feels like a natural sequel that just so happens to have been made 30 years later. It's not to the quality of, say, Top Gun Maverick, but it sort of follows a similar path of offering some member berries, but it doesn't get bogged down by it, and it tries to stay focused on being its own thing. Eddie Murphy and the returning cast are clearly all having a lot of fun, though John Aston does look like he's been pulled out of a retirement home, but he's still got it, losing his temper in that usual Taggart way, and gets some good lines. Judge Reinhold doesn't quite have the energy he once had, and now weirdly looks a bit like comedian Alan Davis. If you go back and watch Beverly Hills Cop 3, Eddie's not interested at all and is just phoning it in, but in this, he is giving it his all. And there are some great moments with him as he goes full Axel Foley, as he bullshits his way into a situation and appearing to ad-lib his way out of trouble. That's what you want to see from him and what makes his character work so well. The action scenes are nicely choreographed and the digital effects are executed well with the combined live action material, with the standout piece with the helicopter as Bobby struggles to control it as it eventually crashes on a golf course. It's a shame they rely on digital blood for when people are shot. We need some proper 80s blood squibs. I did love the moment you see Eddie drive a truck through the entrance of a mansion, feeling like a scene straight out of Stallone's Over the Top. One of the big highlights is the score by Lorne Balfe, with contributions from Tim Capello and Sunglasses Kid. The score captures the style of Harold Faltermeyer's work perfectly. It's got the classic theme tune that is played out in its original form, then there are a couple of remixes of it. We have Tim Capello on saxophone, naturally giving it that pure 80s flavour. It's amazing stuff. I absolutely love the score and so happy Lorne Balfe kept to what made the original film work so well, and thankfully the score is allowed to breathe in the sound mix and is not drowned out by sound effects. Check out the track Axel's Return, which is a masterpiece, feeling it was ripped out of the mid-1980s. A must-own soundtrack. With a $150 million budget, the film doesn't look cheap. It's well photographed and looks like a proper movie. You always have those suspicions when a film goes straight to streaming with those worries of it being a bit naff, but that is not the case. It's a shame this didn't get a theatrical release. There's no reason why Netflix couldn't have put it out there in theatres for a couple of weeks before airing it on their platform. After all these years waiting for a new film in a series, Axel F is surprisingly enjoyable. It has plenty of funny moments, and the film has something to say. Axel has to come to terms with not being a great father, and has to juggle solving a crime and trying to save his friend Billy. With there being so many movies over the years that follow a similar structure combining comedy with action, making it tough for Beverly Hills Cop to stand out in a sea of copycats over the years, and for newcomers to discover it, but at the end of the day, you are watching it to see Eddie Murphy, and that's the selling point, and he certainly delivers in bringing this character back with plenty of energy and charm. It's not a patch on the first film, naturally, but all this film needed to be was entertaining and funny, and it succeeds at doing that, so certainly worth a watch. I hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click the like button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest reviews. Big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members for supporting the channel. If you want to get involved and gain access to exclusive videos and take part in Q&As, follow the link below.